Batman the Sovereign Knight is in the Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mezco 112 Collective Sovereign Knight Batman regular retail release. And if you recall a couple weeks, maybe like a month or two ago, I reviewed the um, Onyx version of this. So there's going to be a lot of the same accessories and pretty much the same figure with a different uh, material suit, essentially, and a little bit of a different finish on some of the paint scheme. But otherwise, it's virtually the same figure. This thing is completely loaded with tons of accessories. Um, there was a little bit of controversy about the suit on it and based on like sort of how the release suit came out versus how they kind of had the preview images or the prototype images. Um, the suit is essentially the same as they teased, but the dark um, lines in between the texture are just, just, they're not dark anymore. They're, they're not a different color. So uh, yeah. And I've heard some people kind of grip about the knees. I do not mind the knees at all. But uh, yeah, this is a really cool figure and it's a really good value because it just comes completely loaded with just tons of awesome accessories. Uh, and this is the middle of the trilogy. Mezco is doing a essentially like a trilogy of Batman figures. They had the Ascending Knight. This is the, that was like the young Batman. This is now the prime of his life Batman called the Sovereign Knight. And they've just hinted at the Supreme Knight, which should be late. Uh, in his career, Batman, that's probably going to be coming out. Um, it'll probably go for pre-order this year and then come out next year. But yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this one. Let's get into this review. This guy's got standard Mesco packaging. It looks a lot like the other Batman figures where the box um, has just the symbol on the front, gray. Uh, but this one's white on the side, which is kind of cool. Differentiates it a little bit if you're going to kind of line them up book style on the shelf. And then you've got, of course, all sorts of uh, glam shots and accessory supply information on the back. And yeah, it's a collector friendly box, really nice packaging, very large, very typical of the Mezco 112 Collective. And as usual, I'll start my review off by taking a look at the way he's set up initially in package without any swapped out accessories going. So this uh, head sculpt is pretty cool. It feels like a little more um, armored or, you know, it's, it's got like these panels and stuff. So it feels a little more like technical and uh, like it's got technology. It's almost like an armored type of a helmet rather than just a mask like Ascending Knight kind of feels like. So yeah, so it's got a pretty cool look to it. This particular head sculpt, the standard head, has the long ears on it. And then there's a couple other head sculpts as well, one of which has short ears. Uh, the eyes are nice, nice and cleanly painted white, a solid color. And he's got a stern look on his face. And the paint and sculpt and everything on the head look really good. That same kind of um, almost armored paneling continues down the neck and you can see the cowl itself let me pull the cape down and you can get a look at the cowl itself and how it's again part of that same sort of armored feel rather than just a mask it feels a little bit more of like a probably like a bulletproof thing or something the cape is all soft there's no wiring although the set does come with those wires where you can kind of pin it up um, that can be a tricky to use that a lot of people get frustrated with um, and it folds back nicely It's a thinner material much thinner material than the uh, Ascending Knight figure. So I like that about it. It flows a little bit better It just feels a little more natural Probably one of my biggest gripes with the figure if I can even say that I have one is the The emblem on the chest for me. It's just a little too puffy It's not sharp and crisp enough I wish it was a thinner plastic, like a, just not quite as much plastic. And then I wish the lines in it were cut a little bit more sharply. Uh, it just feels sort of puffy and soft when I kind of look at it. I wish it were a little crisper. So that's probably my one and only um, problem with this figure. Everything else I really like. I even, I even like the knee pads. I don't know what people, the problem people have with the knee pads, but uh, I don't mind them at all. 
Uh, I guess I'm indifferent about the knee pads. Okay, and so looking at the texture of the suit, this is really, really cool. It's, um, it does have lining throughout. Like you do get that sense of it being sort of a tech material, um, some sort of, sort of like high tech, uh, polycarbonate, some, some kind of like bulletproof thing. Like it's almost like a male or something. And uh, it, it looks great. It looks um, almost like a cross between the Black Panther and a cross between that and maybe the suit on the Batman v Superman Batman figure, which is one of my favorite materials that they've ever used on it. Uh, so it's really nice. It's got basically like um, very minuscule overlay pieces, I think, if I'm seeing this correctly. Um, you know, it's basically like a spandex material. And then on top of it, these are little like vinyl pieces that are sort of like texture glued on there or something. Um, it's really hard to tell exactly what's going on there, but it, it feels like a fabric with this pattern texture sort of like um, overlaid on top of it. But yeah, it, it's really cool. And I've seen a lot of pictures of this thing in it in the like super bright lighting. It gets kind of washed out. But uh, in hand, it's got a really rich, dark gray color to it. There's some excellent um, wash going on in the belt. I feel like my belt on this one is a lot nicer, a lot more nicely painted than the belt on my Onyx figure. It just has a lot of te like uh, depth to it because it's got some black wash throughout and some black painted details on there. It does have a little holster for the uh, grapple gun. Um, I guess taking a look at the hands, these little pieces on the gauntlet, the gauntlet spikes or whatever, are a nice, like, softish sort of vinyl. So, like, you don't have to worry about them snapping off, I don't think, really. And um, it, it matches, the rest of the gauntlet matches the, um, the mask, the cowl, with the same almost paneling, rather than just a material, like a fabric cowl or something, or a fabric gauntlet. And then you can get a look at the hands. Nicely sculpted. Not much paint going on on the hands with the gauntlets, but still looks really nice. Uh, and then the boots, same thing. Very similar styling. Feels heavy and sort of armored. Like this Batman is much more prepared for battle than the Ascending Knight. There's a little bit of a different gloss on the, on the, um, on the heel of the boot. That makes it a little more shiny. But yeah, this is an excellent looking figure. My belt's weird. It was in the box like this, like crooked. And so it's now like held that position and it always wants to kick back to the side. Um, but that's not a big deal. I might be able to heat it up and then cool it down and it'll probably go back to its natural shape. But it's a little, a little annoying, not too bad. And just one more look at the cape itself so you can see how kind of big it'll come out to. Very nice looking cape. Bringing in a few other figures for some size comparisons and see how he looks next to his counterparts. So uh, first up, I will show you next to the the other gray and black Mezco, recent Mezco Batmans. So you've got the Ascending Knight and then you've got the Batman v Superman. These are like the closest in style to this guy from the Mezco line, in my opinion. And, um, you know, you tell me, what do you think is your preferred black and gray look. We've got the Ascending Knight, Sovereign Knight, and then the movie version. All three I think are excellent. Um, I'm probably gonna go with this one. I was really kind of hoping and expecting it would live up to the BVS version, and I, I kind of think it is. It's, it's really good. I, I like it a lot. The only thing is I prefer the logos on the other two guys than the emblem on his chest. And just to show the Sovereign Knight Batman next to the Sovereign Knight Onyx Batman, uh, you can get a look here and you can see how much shinier it is. I mean, they look like two completely different figures, but essentially the only difference is the logo, the paint job, and the material of the suit. Everything else is the same sculpt work. It's all the same sort of bits and pieces and accessories and all that stuff. A couple other Mezcos in the DC comic book universe. We have um, the Red Sun Superman. And my current favorite Mezco of the year, this might be matching it now, but the Dark Side figure. 
And finally, a little bit of Star Wars. Here's a Black Series Luke Skywalker, just to give you a sense of scale. And an SH Figure Arts Darth Vader. Okay, and while I have these other figures out, just to satisfy the curiosity, we are going to try to swap the heads. So let's see if we can put the Sovereign Knight head on. Yep, that fits perfectly. Sovereign Knight head on the Ascending Knight Batman. And the Ascending Knight Batman head on the Sovereign Knight figure. Yeah, those seem to fit pretty good, I think. Um, let's see here. Maybe slightly loose on this one, but it looks pretty good to me. So, yeah, the heads fit. And for accessories, he comes with this second mast head with sort of a uh, grimacing or uh, sneering type of a face sculpt. You can see his teeth bared. Same, virtually the same sculpt, except the ears on this one are a little bit shorter. I have seen some people have been able to heat these up and loosen the glue and pop out the face part and then swap it out with the other one if you want to have the short ears on the sort of regular straight face. And then he's got this, which is a real highlight for me. This thing is just painted so beautifully. Uh, this damaged head sculpt. He's got a basically like a black eye under there. And then you can see the, the, the metal structure underneath getting um, exposed, having been maybe swiped by Catwoman's claws or something. So that's a really cool head sculpt. Adds a lot to the options with this figure. And then you have a Bruce Wayne head, which is um, very similar to the other Bruce Wayne head on the Ascending Knight. And when I did my other review, they, uh, they, they are very close sculpt-wise. And um, it's essentially just meant to be the exact same Bruce Wayne, almost as if, it, as if it's played by like the same actor or drawn by the same artist, only older now. And you can see a little bit of salt and pepper in the hair and... Um, it's just got a little bit more fuller face. He's a little bit older. So uh, pretty nice that we come with four heads. That's an awesome, awesome accessory kit. Uh, he also has this um, Sonic Disruptor gun thing uh, for his detective work. Pretty cool. Nicely painted. A few different colors in there. Some gray, a little bit of red. Um, and then this front piece comes off. Uh, so yeah, so pretty cool piece right there. And sort of to go along with that, he has a drone that's in the shape of a bat and it has these articulated wings. And again, it's painted really nicely. Um, some sort of metallic, almost gunmetal colors going on. And, uh, looks like maybe possibly a little bit of dry brushing to give it a silver accent. But yeah, it's a pretty cool little piece. Nice option. He's got a grapple gun with, again, some of that same styling, a little bit of gray, a little bit of dry brush, I think, uh, with mixed in with the black. And then he has some grapple pieces. So this piece right here will just fit right into the hole and you can have it sort of loaded and ready to fire. And, and then it's got this piece with the string. Um, I'm not even going to remove it, but you can imagine that piece pegs in right there and then you got a string coming off it. He has some batarangs. He comes with one sort of large batarang. Mine's a little messed up right there. I gotta straighten that out, I think. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. But um, I kind of wish that came straight down right there on the edge. But I love this batarang. This is kind of the one I think I'm gonna have him on the shelf posed with. And then he comes with a slew. I'm not, I don't even have them all in my hand right now. But he comes with a bunch of these tiny little batarangs as well. And these look like this. He's got 10 of those. And for hands, he comes with the two fists that we saw already on the figure. He comes with these open action hands. He comes with these sort of tightly... Uh, sculpted gripping hands for batarangs. He comes with these little more open gripping hands, maybe for like the bigger batarang or just for general like grasping onto things. And then he's got trigger finger hands for the guns 
and then he's got this kryptonite brass knuckles uh, for beating the crap out of Superman. He also has the usual stand, and in addition to that, it's got the flight arm that can peg into the hole where the peg is. Batman has very good articulation as well. Um, there's some weird thing going out in my neck. Like, I don't know if it's supposed to move, but the actual cowl does move a little bit on mine. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like lifts up a bit, but it does give him a little, a slightly bit more extra movement in the head. Um, and that being said, his head can tilt up this far, which is not great. I mean, I kind of wish it went up a little higher. You could probably fudge it by like popping it off and readjusting it, but it'll look down quite a bit. And then um, it'll rock back and forth. A little bit of the sort of chicken thing um, because there's two, there's basically a barbell at the, at the top of the neck and then at the top of the head. So some pretty good movement, some pretty expressive range in the head. And then the arm can lift up quite a bit and bring it back down and can rotate all the way up. And then there's a bicep swivel. Hard to sort of see with the suit on, but that's turning there. The elbows are double jointed and he can get his arm up that much. Very nice. And then there's a little bit of rotation in the forearm, which is nice because the way it's sculpted, you want to be able to move this to get it out of the way of the elbow. But it doesn't go all the way around or anything like that. Not that I would try to because, you know, the suit is sort of tucked in there and I wouldn't want to, like, disrupt that. Um, the wrists have an excellent amount of, you know, basically a ball hinge that can swivel and rotate all the way around. I'm pretty sure the belt can be removed but mine feels like it might be glued and i don't really want to press it just in case ungluing it means i can't peg it back in so but there's definitely a separation right there i believe he crunches forward basically just that much but he does rotate at the waist and at the top so you can get a pretty good amount of sort of swivel and action going on there Moving his belt up a little bit, he can kick forward quite a bit and back a really good amount as well. His leg can come out pretty much as far as you would ever need it to go. And then there's a swivel at the top of the thigh. And then the double jointed knee can bend up about this far. Um, there's no rotation in the boot. I mean, just like a tiny bit. I don't really think it's supposed to be like that, but um, moving down to the foot. Fairly limited in the feet. I wish there was a little more inward rocker motion there. Um, he can bring them down this far and then up this far. So it would be nice if there was a little more articulation in the feet, but maybe as I work it, it might get a little better. So I can get it about that far. So that'll pretty much do it for the articulation and pretty much for the review. Um, this is an excellent release. It's got just a boatload of accessories. It has four head sculpts, which is just such a good value. It, um, it has a suit that feels very durable and flexible, and it doesn't feel like, oh, I better worry about having it in a certain position so that it doesn't tear the pleather. Uh, it just feels like a really good suit for posing, playing around with, very durable, very um, like spandexy and flexible. So... I'm not worried at all about ripping this suit, at least not until I, you know, have any reason to be. Uh, and then my, probably my only gripe is I wish the logo on the chest was just a little more, uh, subdued or, I mean, like kind of like a little more sharper and smaller and tighter rather than this big, um, three dimensional puffy thing. Um, it's probably like the weakest part of the figure, but it doesn't really do much to say, hey, this figure sucks. It's not like that at all. I think this is an excellent release. I highly recommend it. I do know that this one was a carton count of 12,000, so it set a new record for um, the production runs. If we can trust those carton counts, this is a huge release, which makes sense. It's, you know, Batman is their flagship 
uh, character and, you know, it makes sense that there's a lot of them out there. But what that also means is you can probably be very patient and wait for a really good deal. In fact, I predict if you were to be patient, you could probably find this for $60 rather than $80. Um, I do know that Mezco has been cracking down on their minimum advertised price, so it may be a little trickier finding people selling them for under retail, but I think you're still going to be able to find them no problem. So get out there, get hunting. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this figure. Follow me on Instagram, listen to the Dork Lair podcast, and until next time, may the force be with you. Dork Lair.